Hello, everyone, and welcome to this LinkedIn Live session, Negotiating with Family and Friends. And uh, I always uh, am always impressed by how international is the audience of the people that join uh, our session. So if you are there connected, how about telling us from where you're connecting? This will give us an idea about uh, who is interested in this fascinating topic. And then, you know, I'm going to give the word to our guest today, Mathieu Kaplan, and we will ask him to tell us a few ideas in a moment. So I hope that you're comfortably seated and interested and keen to discover some more on uh, this topic of negotiating with family and friends. Happy to see the first people that uh, are joining live. You know, there is just uh, a small lag between uh, when you get uh, the invitation and people joining in. So um, as how about uh, asking uh, Mathieu to quickly tell us uh, what is uh, uh, his background? You know, if you tell us a bit more about himself. Okay. Hi, Hello, everyone. Mathieu. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, Giuseppe, for inviting me today for this session and sharing with you and the, the rest of the audience uh, this, this very, uh, I would say, interesting and uh, what I would say quite not easy topic about negotiating with friends and family. Uh, most of you probably know that I have uh, been working in, um, in, in sales and marketing position for, for more than 20 years, uh, in, let's say, in the luxury industry and uh, dealing in the uh, and working on the development of, uh, I would say, FMG, FMTG premium brands, and probably uh, had to face many uh, different, uh, I would say, uh, perspective in terms of negotiation. Of negotiation, and today is really the day to to share experience and and share with you guys all questions you may have and may raise on that on that topic. Okay, fantastic. Then um, why don't we get started with? Uh, uh, the first question, I think I was intrigued by, by one thing. Why did you choose uh, such a title for this live session? Right, at the end, you're, you're not a family counselor, you are a business executive. Okay, tell us what's led you to talk about family and friends. Uh, I think there's, there's one, uh, there's one uh, I would say, um, important point about, about um, I would say, about negotiation, uh, which is that negotiation is not only in business, only at, not only at the office, but negotiation is a uh, is really everywhere, and probably <clears throat> um, uh, you you know that 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 every day, even with your I would say with your with your wife, with your husband, with your daughter, with your son, uh, you spend uh, without probably knowing it, you negotiate, and uh, and sometimes uh, things are difficult. Uh, it goes from the the menu of the day and also to a uh, as well to the, I would say, to uh, probably uh, destination of holidays or even activity during the day. And I think uh, everything uh, normally is must be, must be a bit prepared if you want to be good at this. And definitely this is something that you have to be, to, to be in. So I think it's also a way to say that negotiation is not only something which, is, which sounds, uh, I would say, obvious or difficult. Uh, but I think it's, um, it's also something uh, that you have to do to dig in and just to be prepared, but a negotiation is almost everywhere, and and you use it uh, without knowing it almost every day. And this is why I wanted to share this with you guys today. Absolutely. In fact, we probably use it several times per day, right? You know, as you wake up and you start, especially if you have children and you have to get them started on uh, on something, then you know, yeah, the negotiation may start already at, at seven o'clock in the morning. Fantastic. Yeah. I have a picture, by the way, and then if you can put the, the quote introduction, question one, a negotiation, even there is a small mistake, but negotiation is not something to be avoid or feared. And this is really the, the message I want to give you about this, this first sentence, okay? I don't know if you can, can share this, uh, Enan. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I, mean, I, put, I, put, I put my glasses on to see a bit better. Absolutely, yeah. They're missing a T here, but yeah, I think it's it's an everyday, as 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 the quote says, it's 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 an everyday part of life. Okay, so just don't be afraid about this, but just probably have in mind what's a good negotiation and how a good negotiation can take place if you want to make it successful. Yeah, 
Perfect. Now, we do have in our audience uh, a number of business executives, and, you know, they may be uh, uh, thinking about, you know, how would you describe the difference between negotiating with family and friends versus negotiating at work? I think for me, to be frank, there is there is no main difference. The probably the 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 main important topic you have to take into consideration is emotion, because definitely there is a huge difference between dealing at home about everyday life, everyday topic, versus dealing a real deal, which sounds uh, I would say sometimes and most of the time very complicated and and strong and powerful, but on a day to day. The only thing is that the most important point is about emotion. So the, the more you are aware and the more you deal with emotion with, with your close people, with friends and family, the better the, the negotiation will be. And this is something super important because when you work at, at, at home or at the office or even with retailers, uh, I would say uh, clients, uh, wall seller, whatever, you, everyone you are working with on a, I mean, on daily life, um, you 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 can escape the emotion because emotion can be a way because it's not internally something you have to you perceive strongly. But when you deal with some someone very close, emotion are really 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 strong. And then probably most of the time, when you deal with your close friend and people, uh, the emotion takes the, the larger part of everything more than everything. And then sometimes. The, the deal is closed. You cannot manage anything because of the emotion. And I think this is really the main difference here. Okay. Well, uh, I think, you know, we got to the point about, you know, the emotions uh, and uh, how important they are when dealing with family and friends. But uh, more in general, what are the, the most important points you need to take into account for negotiating with family and friends? I think it's like any of the, I would say, negotiation you do. The first point is, of course, preparation. There is no good negotiation without preparation, and this is a key point. Um, and I think uh, I would take an example. If you want to uh, to do deal with your uh, with your with your kids and with with your with your husband or wife about the next holiday destination, you have to take into consideration uh, what, of course, is a budget. What is the the most, I would say, popular uh, destination within the family. You have to prep everything you know uh, about what is motivating your, your team, your family. And this is the preparation which goes also, which can be, and this is, just, I mean, it's the same also when you, when you deal at work, uh, you never do any good negotiation without preparation. I think this is the first point. Second point is also to, um, also to, to pay attention to all the, I would say, the, the, the feedback you get. Uh, at a second level to say, okay, first I prep, second I pay attention to any of the, I would say, uh, information I get from from the people I'm I'm dealing with, I'm, I'm discussing with, and also to be very connected with them, so very open-minded. Third, uh, if you hear some negative point, it's about asking question and not any regular question, but open question, and this is something that most of the of the people who are negotiating do know uh, that if you have open question, that means you need an answer, not a yes or a no, but a clear answer that's a full destination or something you want to get from the, I mean, from your team. And then after, when you get feedbacks and answers, they can, you can start, I would say, the argumentation. And then you, you, you start after to anchor, to, to, to do a proposal, and then to present, I would say, probably the most value creation you propose to your family and, and friends. Uh, if you want, if we are still on the, I would say destination, uh, I would say holiday you are dealing with, uh, this is probably something you have to do. And after um, it's important also to make sure that you have the agreements uh, and, and the yes and the positive attitude of all the parties, the, the, the people you are dealing on, di discussing with, to make sure that at the end you find a, a correct deal. So for me, this is the, 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 I would say the mandatory step you have to take into account, but it's like an everyday, uh, I would say, negotiation process that you do uh, on, on, on a clearly basis. Uh, thank you, Elan, for, for sharing this. Um, but it's, it's a, I would say, a negotiation wherever it is, is if you have the, the good process is almost the same, depending also with who you're dealing with and be, again, aware of the emotion, especially when you deal with family and friends. Okay, I mean, 
uh, we've seen a lot of similarities, you know, with uh, the the kind of things that we do in the business uh, world. But then, why it is finally sometimes so difficult to negotiate with family and friends? Because the, alors, probably I, can, I will ask Ellen to uh, to go on the wheel. Uh, there is a, a drawing of the wheel of negotiation. Probably you can understand this a bit a bit more easy on the picture I sent him. Uh, you, the, the wheel of negotiation is is a is a clear picture of um, wh where the the different level of negotiation you have. The first one is really what we call the auction bargaining, which like if you are in Istanbul at the souk, you you see a carpet and you and you deal with the price in I would say probably 20 seconds and it's yes or no. But the more I would say deep, the more close you go in the wheel of negotiation, the more you go with high dependency which is probably the situation you, you are with your family and friends, meaning that the most important is to keep, I would say, the momentum and the, the relationship you have. So it's super important that you, you have the, 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 the importance that uh, you have this, this high dependency, but because it's, I would say, uh, you, you depend on it, but you have this in mind probably to, to make sure that um, you find at the end of the day a win-win situation. But um, I would say globally that uh, it's 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 really something difficult because you are really on a on sometimes on a real bargaining at I would say situation like at the souk like do you want to go on a holiday in uh, I don't know in Greece oh no and then the deal is closed because probably you, you didn't prep enough the situation about going on holiday in Greece and then after you know that you and you are preparing holiday so you have to find a solution at the end of the day so probably. This is why it's so difficult because it could be very, very short. On the other hand, you must be and you must find a win-win situation at the end of the day. So this is why it's so difficult. And again, dealing with prep and emotion is the answer to find the best, uh, the best way. Okay. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Uh, let me also share something on my side about, uh, uh, you know, some of the challenges of negotiating with uh, w with family and friends. And this is the idea that uh, if we want to uh, try to describe a bit, you know, the different type of possible uh, uh, situation you may end up with uh, in a graph, you know, outcome versus relationship, then whenever you are dealing with uh, family and friends, you always end up on the right side, right? You know, the relationship is high and you may either end up uh, in uh, the high outcome kind of box or in the low outcome kind of box. Now, what is interesting is that the research indicates is that most of the time we don't do a good deal with family and friends. Because, you know, since the relationship is so good, is so important, then rather than doing what you were describing, you know, open question, looking for creative solution, taking the time, you know, to explore a different way to solve the deal so that we can really make a, 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 an optimal type of negotiation, since uh, we want to preserve the relationship, we ended up doing something quick and dirty. <laughs> and the, the typical mistake that we make is, uh, you know, split the difference. No, no, you for know, sure. Because uh, split the difference, you know, looks uh, fair. Split the difference is uh, reasonable. Split the difference is fast. So rather than uh, saying, okay, let me reflect, let's continue, let's explore, how can we make everybody happy? We just say, okay, you know, uh, you want to have a budget of the holiday of 2 million, uh, 2,000. I want to have a budget of 1,500. Let's make it 1,750. And that uh, makes it uh, fast and easy, but uh, may not exactly be the ideal solution when uh, uh, we want to really do for do the, the best things in, in terms of family and friends. Yeah, for sure. By the way, if, if, and can you show the, the picture of managed emotions? Probably on the on picture... Uh, I've, I've, um, I've added. Uh, probably this is something you can just to show also about the, the the way you are. Sorry, Giuseppe, I interrupt you, but it was probably a, one of the moments to show this this picture. Yeah, keep on going. No, no, no. Let me... uh... Yeah. 
yeah, all the emotion going uh, out, you know, when when we like, do, yeah. And this is when, when what as as you just said, Giuseppe, this is really what happens in family. When you're talking with family, is that uh, it's it's there is a there is almost no frame. So if, even if you want to do something, I would say positive and 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 I would say uh, I would say at the end finding a good argument. Uh, I think this is the way it, it, I mean, it should be. So this is also the theory. And most, most of the time when you practice it, it's, it's always a bit different. But at least the, the, I would say the session today is to, is to show and, and say, OK, guys, if you want to do it properly, this is the way you have to do it. OK. And after you have to deal with the, also most of the time with emotion. Then. Yeah. OK. Excellent. By the way, uh, thank you, Matthias, for uh, also bringing, uh, <laughs> you know, the family and friends in negotiation are not always nice and friendly, right? You know, there may be difficult family negotiation situation, you know, divorce, uh, heritage, uh, heritage discussion, uh, uh, care of elderly parents or those kind of things where, uh, you know, there may be a number of unfair negotiation tactics, there may be different values that come into the negotiation or maybe different discussion with your partner or whatever. So yes, uh, thank you, Matthias, for reminding us that it's not always, uh, you know, deciding a negotiation destination. It may also be much more challenging. Uh, before, by the way, we continue on this topic, I remind you all in the audience that you can ask question. So we will be delighted to get your question and to help you address some of the challenges that you may want to bring, maybe some experience, some example from your past dealing. Uh, by the way, let me also take this opportunity also to tell you about our forthcoming events, because uh, we have a LinkedIn Live, which is coming up on the 12th of October, and the next LinkedIn Life is about selling an idea to your boss or colleagues. So if you find it easy to get your boss to buy into your ideas, then you don't need to show up. If instead, you know, maybe there is something that you may find as more of a challenge, right? You know, getting... Uh, uh, getting you know your, your your boss to buy into your ideas then you may enjoy our next linkedin life you know 12th of october at uh, one o'clock and the other things that i want to tell you is that uh, next week next week on uh, okay so you, you find on the chat the link to our uh, next linkedin life event and the other things that i want to tell you is that we are going to also, as, I prom as we promised uh, in our last LinkedIn message, we are also going to give a present to the people that uh, are following our LinkedIn life. And uh, uh, we are delighted to say that uh, we had uh, over 3,000 joining, some 3,000 people joining our LinkedIn life. So it is, uh, it is uh, very nice to have uh, uh, so many people joining us. And uh, we want to give a small present to the people that are joining our LinkedIn Life. So we are going to give away 10 tickets to my webinar on creating value in negotiation. Creating value in negotiation, my next webinar taking place on the 8th of October at 2 o'clock. The selling price is Andres with francs. You can also, of course, sign up. But maybe you want to try to win it. And uh, it's very simple to win it. All you have to do is to send me an email and to tell me why should I be, why should I get a free invitation to this webinar? So we're going to put in the chat uh, the email, and uh, then uh, there you see it, you know, Giuseppe at cabl.ch, and just tell me why we should get a free invitation to this webinar. And uh, if you're one of the 10 winners, you're going to get a LinkedIn message from me with uh, the details on how to join for free. Uh, with that in mind, let's go back to the topic of the day, you know, because it's a fascinating topic, negotiating with family and friends. And uh, we want to get Mattia maybe to tell us, uh, you know, you know, I think, you know, participants often like uh, a checklist, you know, something that, you know, we outline, you know, what are the key principles I need to take into account when facing negotiating with family and friends? You know, can you 
help uh, our listeners to get uh, some key takeaways? Yeah, of course. I, I believe first there is, uh, of course, there is, the, in, especially in family and friends, negotiation is, uh, is I believe, sometimes even more difficult. Uh, as uh, as I seen, I, I was I was looking at the chat in the meantime, uh, Giuseppe, when you, when you were talking, and I saw uh, Matthias uh, who said uh, it's also about unfair negotiation tactics. Probably when you have a very difficult situation like a divorce, uh, whether you are right or, or not, but always wrong as your partner is not collaborative, which is which is fully true. In that case, it's important also to um, also to to share. Emotion here because emotion is is the most important, I would say, aspect of the negotiation. I'm not saying that it's easy. Huh? It's always very difficult because if you stick to your to to to, to your point of view, there is sometimes there is almost uh, no negotiation, and then probably the best is to adjourn and say probably let's take the time to uh, yeah to share our emotion and see where where we want to go together. Okay, this is probably what you have to do, but it's not it's not always easy. But to answer your question, Giuseppe, I would say that I would probably go for for on the one hand with family and probably uh, on the other hand to say what you do when you start business with friends which is also point at some of the the, the, the people um, who who are at, who are attending the session today um, uh, asked me before we we start uh, i would say first with with the family i think it's important that as i said I, you as as a, as a, if you are parents and you are discussing with your kids it's first to deal with your emotion okay never i would say as a parent it's very difficult. Huh? Uh, we always <laughs> we always lose temper, but probably uh, the first I would say uh, recommendation I can say is really to say don't lose temper. As a parent, you you, you must be uh, really uh, in in I mean I would say in that perspective to say never yelling, never I would say arguing that much. But first is to deal with emotion as a parent. Secondly, um, help help your kids with their emotion, which is for me the second point. We all know that kids have more emotion than parents. They say everything, which is, uh, okay, if you take my uh, cell phone, probably uh, I will lose all my friends, okay? Uh, Daddy, because of you, I will have no more friends tomorrow because of you, okay? This is something I've heard about most of, <laughs> most of the time in my life, but this is also something you have to take into account and to help your, your kids about emotion. So uh, it's, for example, just if, if I take another example, if, if, if bedtime for young kids is stressful, then uh, take the time to go with your uh, very small kids uh, to have like a story a moment or to go even brush the teeth. Have, I would say probably a few minutes before going to bed and make sure that you have, you create this stressless environment because the situation is stressful. Okay, this is probably the second, I would say, advice I can, I, I can give. Um, also, the, the third one is to listen also and to learn to say uh, probably, uh, uh, that's uh, sometimes and most of the time the kids gives information about the emotion of the situation and you have to take this into account otherwise there is no really option to uh, to make sure you are voilà, exactly you are a good listener and then even with your kids you have to listen about their fears their situation all the kids are different and this is something you have to you have to deal with first point is to uh, is, is talk is talk to teach um, for example, uh, to say instead of uh, if you have a very untidy room with one of your kids, instead of saying uh, your room is untidy, I, I can accept this and yelling, it's important to share also emotion with your with your um, with your um, uh, with your kids and say I have I, I spent with you three or four times this week to tidy your room. Uh, probably uh, I'm expecting that uh, you you do it positively and not doing for the fifth or the sixth time this 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 time. So this is why I, I believe. We have a. We need to find something here in common. So this is the fourth point, and um, and the fifth uh, the the fifth one is for me use persuasion instead of coercion. Meaning that when you are too powerful, you always um, I would say give a message of strengthness, which is not for the the good moment. It's like not finding a win-win situation, but take into account that. Uh, um, for example, I would say uh, never use too much expression like uh, you have a kid who wants to go out. Uh, he's 11. He wants to go out to play outside. Uh, on my dead body, never you will you, you, you will go out. No, ne never like this. Okay. So this is something that you have to take in consideration. And I think this for me are the are the fifth I would say points that you have to uh, take into consideration for 
dealing and working with family. Thank you, Mathieu. Uh, maybe let me add another perspective about the topic of emotions, right? Because indeed, you know, often emotions tend to be high when we have a discussion, let's say, with our partner. And, uh, uh, and it may not be easy you know, not to get emotional. Uh, having said that, there is one thing that we can do, which is generate positive emotions. You, and you what are... I mean, you know, I, I want to bring back, you want to go back to a research that I read, you know, 15 years ago. And uh, it was from a book from John Gottman about why marriages succeed or fail. And uh, John Gottman has a, a studio in the US where uh, they are able to predict with over 90% accuracy whether a couple will stay married or not. So what they do, they get a couple of newlywed and they have a short interview with them where during this period, the people have to talk about a recent discussion they had, a, a challenge that they faced. And then, you know, they had all kind of camera looking at micro expression, all those kind of things to try to detect, you know, what are the best indicator to see whether the people will stay together or not. And the key predictor of whether a couple stay together or not, by the way, this is vital information. If you recently married, you know, try to keep this in mind. That's the key learning of this week is the key indicator is the amount of appreciation that the two parties shown with each other during the argument. What I mean is that the couple that continue to be, because they monitor then the couple whether they stay together. So the study lasted over a long time. They checked whether the couple actually stayed together or not. And the key predictor is appreciation. Otherwise stated, when a couple shows high appreciation, the couple that stayed married, a ratio of five to one, five positive for one negative. The couple that broke up, one to one, something good and one complain, something good and one complain. So uh, yeah. there is something that you can do if you want to increase your chance of a positive emotion during your arguments is to show appreciation for your partner. So back to the point of Mathieu, listening is a key point, but also, you know, acknowledging whenever they're right, you know, say when they do something right, something when they uh, think something right, you know, do look for the positive and this is certainly going to help you to generate the better emotions in, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in your discussion with family. Let's take uh, a question from the audience and uh, let's listen to this one from Dagmar. Most of the time, the other party is not skilled in negotiation. They may not be prepared. They may know what they want, what they're ready to give up, how to keep the negotiation cooperative, etc. Any recommendation on how to overcome this? Um, you know, every time there is, I would say, in general, in negotiation, every time you have uh, an unclear situation, there is two options. Rather, you are drawn the, the negotiation and you say, let's see each other in a, in a shorter way, in a, probably in a few days, because there is something and you, you, uh, I, I need to double check and prepare. And the second option for me is to anchor and in that case, make a proposal. I think... I believe that in general in negotiation, when the the, the when the part the party who is doing the first I would say proposal is incurring, and then in that case gives a better I would say take a, a stronger advantage at the end of the day on the full negotiation because you you frame in a way your your nego uh, by asking and and uh, and and giving an argument or I mean I would say proposal in that case this is something this is probably the the best way to step into, I would say, uh, uh, a constructive negotiation. Because as you said, most of the time, people are not prepared and they don't know exactly where they want to go. And they just, okay, sit like this or asking for, 
for question and, and, and not ready. But at the end of the day, when you do first of all, uh, it's really the, for me the one of the best way to, to be introduced and to start, I would say, uh, a positive negotiation. But maybe Josepa, you want to add something? You want to add something else? Well, uh, a simple technique, Dagmar, that doesn't call for much expertise in negotiation and that can lead to problem solving, joint problem solving, is brainstorming. To say, okay, I want to go to the movie tonight. You want to stay at home. Let's reflect for a moment what are the options are there. Okay, maybe we are going to watch a movie on Netflix. Maybe we are going to go tomorrow to, the, to see a movie. Maybe we're going to, so, you know, you can then, you know, get together and this is uh, a way to get people to think uh, of something else that generally split the difference because, uh, you know, there are other, uh, other more sophisticated way to think. And I think that uh, brainstorming is a simple one that uh, may get uh, the different parties to think a bit uh, on uh, any poss or the possible solution that may help uh, to move the, the situation forward. Uh, by the way, I want to also say one thing to the people that ask questions. We are only going to take questions about negotiating with family and friends. So, of course, you know, although you know you may have an interest to get questions on other type of topics, I guess you know really the topic. You know, we stick to the topic of the LinkedIn Life, so we will be delighted to get questions about negotiating with family and friends, even if you have you know difficult question, you know heritage, divorce, whatever, you know anything, or the children that have a, a difficult type of behavior, whatever, you know, feel free to ask any question that you consider appropriate. But we are only going to stay with topics on uh, this question. Maybe, Mathieu, how about if you tell us, you know, okay, uh, if we go back to the topic of negotiating with family and friends, you know, which will be my approach in a negotiation? Which will be, you know, the kind of things that uh, you will keep in mind when going uh, in negotiating with family and friends? Um, just before we're talking about the family and probably uh, there is also a point which is uh, dealing with friends uh, and business, which is uh, a crucial point, and that's happened uh, really uh, in, a, in a very in a very frequent, I would say, situation. Uh, and I think what is very difficult to is to have in mind that what you want to keep first, which is most probably and what is real, the I would say the relationship um, you have with your friend, and you want to prevent any, I would say any, uh, I would say difficult situation to. Not, not, I mean, in, in a way, not to lose your friend at the end of the day. So I would say uh, it's super important to uh, to really prepare. If, if you want to set up a business with uh, with some friends, uh, it's very important to to prepare for all the complication. Meaning that um, nothing must must be hidden here, and then you have to highlight all the different, uh, I would say, topics and and uh, and highlight also all the, I would say the. The different step probably uh, even more importantly than when you deal with with, uh, with with someone you don't know. Okay, so I think this is the first point. So uh, you, I would say you need to list all the complications, interest, option, criteria, relation, relationship, and alternatives you uh, you have you have to dig into to set up a business with a friend. Uh, secondly, you have to 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 strive with transparency. So very transparent. Uh, um, and to, I would say, simply say and mention for me all difficulties. This is something really you have to take into account when you set up a business with a friend. If you have difficulties, especially when you deal with, a, I would say, a family business, inside the family, you have uh, three, four, five people who, who disagree or can argue very strongly. Sometimes another option is also to, to take, a, a, I would say, an outside consultant, someone neutral from the family, that can advise someone who is, I would say, related, but agreed by all the family members, or the, the, I mean, the friend members. And to have an advice from someone outside can also be good um, also as a solution. An advice as also when you have a, a, a stock negotiation. And uh, the fourth point probably is really, again, to plan her heads and really far from the actual situation and plan everything like strategy, uh, I would say, uh, succession, everything that probably you don't deal with someone is, 
I mean, who is not your friend, okay? So this is something you have to even dig higher. But for me, these are the four points when you deal with, uh, with, with when you want to set up business with friends that you have to take into account. Interesting. In you know, to close uh, on this topic, I mean, uh, what do we call a successful negotiation, Mattia? You know, if if then we want to try to uh, cap all this idea, you know, how do we measure success? I think success is when when you take the wheel of negotiation is really when you get this win-win situation when when everybody is at the end of the discussion, the negotiation is is happy about the the situation and not like someone feels two step down on on the one step up i would say it's it's something that's uh the i would say the the answer and the the final agreement must be a shared and a win win situation and this is for this is for me the way to uh, let's say let's say that a negotiation has been uh, has been successful yeah that's really the best way to preserve the relationship you know ensuring the satisfaction of the other party if the other party is satisfied with whatever you deal, then whatever is agreed is going to be implemented better. Uh, maybe you can even, uh, yeah, you, you will, you know, will make it easier you know, for the future negotiation. Maybe you can even trade something and say, okay, you know, so this negotiation was really something that went in your direction. You know, next time, you know, I would really like to have to go and watch the football tonight with my friends. You know, remember last week we did something that you were happy. You know, this time please let me go and watch the football because uh, this uh, my group of friends. Uh, is uh, is very interested in this. So uh, before we close it, I just want to remind you that uh, there is a competition to win uh, ten tickets for uh, my uh, next webinar on the eighth of October at two o'clock. Claiming value negotiation and uh, why should you get a free invitation to this web webinar? Is the simple question so drop me an email and even the people that watch the recording can answer this because we're going to give the winner on the 4th of october so on monday we're going to nominate the winner so if you're watching the webinar this week you the recording this week you can always participate mathieu thank you very much for sharing uh, your insight uh, and help us put some frame around the negotiating with family and friends. Thank you all for listening and look forward to reconnect with you at the next LinkedIn Live, 12th of October, selling your ideas to your boss and your colleagues. Thank you, Giuseppe, for inviting me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.